Hi, this is a short video on installing the Zentium thermostat with the Crestron Horizon lighting keypad. The custom double back box required when combining our thermostat with another keypad has plenty of cable knockouts. It's important to mount the back box flush to the wall. The Zentium is to be mounted on the right and the third party keypad mounted on the left. The double back box is universal for Crestron or Lutron keypads, but the mounting holes do slightly differ. This is the Zentium Thermostat Electronic Base Unit. At the back it has five 10K3 remote probe inputs, then the Modbus connector, then the DC power supply. You'll note that the DC input connector is a different style to the others. This reduces the risk of miswiring. We deliberately used plug-in socket connections as this allows for the cables to be terminated and tested at an early stage in the project, and it reduces some of the workload during the commissioning stage. When screwing the Zentium in for the first time, we leave it a little loose to make it easier for alignment. The extended part of the PCB shown here hides a thermostat's built-in temperature and humidity sensor. Over to the other side, we have the USB connection and a hidden programming reset button for any updates or customization to the firmware. Here we have the Crestron Horizon keypad without the frame. This is then plugged in to the pre-terminated cable. Then we mount the keypad and align it with the Crestron mounting holes on the back box. Once again, we leave it a little loose. The next stage is to clip on the custom mid plate. This aligns and spaces the products correctly. This mid plate is then secured to the two products. We use the screws that come with the Crestron to secure the Horizon keypad. Once the unit is secured to the mid plate, there is still some freedom to carry out some final alignment with the wall. Once happy, the complete keypad can be finally secured in place using these four screws. The Crestron programming button can still be accessed. We can see here the Zentium booting up, showing the logo and then some useful information such as communication speeds and the unit address. Pressing and holding the digital crown allows you to access the setup menu where you can change the settings such as the device ID. Here we can see the clear symbols and the lighting confirmation showing that the Zentium wants to heat the room. After a configurable period of time, the high resolution IPS screen would dim its backlight and then eventually turn off. Now we can add the faceplate. This is a new black nickel finish, but I'll show you how easy it is to swap to our standard satin nickel later. We have a black nickel digital crown with a carbon fibre insert. 
Now we're going to remove the black nickel plate and replace it with a standard satin nickel plate. To match, the digital crown also comes in satin nickel and has a carbon fibre ring. These ring inserts on the digital crown can be customised to be wood, carbon fibre, brass, whatever really matches the interior design. We can see just how easy it is to use a Zentium thermostat while it's communicating back to a centralised Crestron or a BMS system. The Zentium deals with all the complexities of ensuring that heating and cooling systems aren't activated at the same time and simplifies management of the maximum and minimum floor temperatures. The Zentium deals with all the complexities of ensuring that the heating and cooling systems aren't activated at the same time. As it's a dual zone thermostat, this happens across both of the zones. I hope you found this video useful and please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, it really does help.